15th meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Roll call. Castro? Here. Cole? Here. Katz? Here. Near? Here. Ruling? Here. Wright? Chair Atherton? Here. Six present. We have a quorum. Okay, approval of the agenda. Do we have any additions or deletions? No additions or deletions, but I will add that once we get to items F2 and F3 this evening, uh, in the background, we discuss continuing items F3, and you have a motion to that end. Uh, since the publication of this agenda on Friday, we received word from the developer of item F2, the public hearing for a uh, special use permit for the property on Blackhawk. Uh, they too are seeking a continuance due to medical reasons. With that in mind, uh, what we'll do for actionable items tonight is seek continuation without taking any uh, testimony on that item or any of those items that we're continuing. So be on that during citizen comments. If someone is out in the audience and wants to speak on either issue, they're welcome to approach the podium uh, because we won't be taking any action. But if they want to have something in for the public record when these items are continued, we would ask them to submit something either in writing or return to the meeting when we continue. Thank you. So I seek an approval of the agenda. Uh, motion for approval. So moved. So moved by Carl. Second. Second by Castro. Those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same side. Citizen comments. So if we have anyone in the audience that would like to speak at all, or as Derek said, yep. So if you'd state your name and your address, please. Hello, my name is uh, Will Heinisch. I'm a local businessman, a local property owner and landlord. Uh, I actually reside in Kingston, 8800 South Rood Road in Kingston, uh, also farm uh, just north of DeKalb. Um, I appreciate Derek uh, explaining uh, the continuance of uh, item F2. Um, it's one of the reasons I came tonight was to speak on that item and uh, in reading the backup material. Um, I don't know if this is something that planning should I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. Can you put your microphone up just a little bit? Well, not, yeah, there you go. Thanks. Is that better? Better. Okay. So in, in regards to, uh, I was going to speak on item two, but this goes for a general for planning and zoning as well. Uh, my concern is, as well as other people I've talked to within the past couple of weeks, is that the major issue, which isn't even in the backup material, is the apartments. Um, in DeKalb, I don't know if you have read the recent decline in NIU enrollment. We lost 1,100 students again this semester, uh, majority of freshmen. Huge loss, huge blow to the community as I feel NIU is a pillar to our community. If you go back over the past nine years, they've lost 6,300 to 6,500 students. It's an average of about 600 students per year. At the same time, if you look at the, in 2004, the public schools had 31% of their students were on a subsidized lunch program. Last year, that has climbed to 62, 63%. Along with, if you follow the Census Bureaus in the last uh, eight to 10 years, the average income for the person for the city of DeKalb is on the decline. The average uh, Section 8 housing and subsidized housing has been on the increase. And I call it a big <coughs> vacuum. It's a big sucking sound. As we lose students, and those students are renters, uh, half the rental property in DeKalb is for rent, and half of the property in DeKalb is owner-occupied. So we've got 50-50 split. And if you look at the numbers in the past eight years, as we've lost NIU students, it has pulled those students out of our housing. In the backfill, the infill the past eight years, um, because we have not had growth in our community according to the census, uh, has been from other places such as all Chicago or areas where they see DeKalb as a value. Landlords, if you talk to us, we have not been able to raise our rents in 10 years. We have some of the cheapest rental property 
in the area. So it's a draw. What's the draw for? Lower incomes, people that can afford that. The solution is not to keep adding more apartments. If you build new apartments, they will always fill. Always. The newest always fills. It's like when somebody builds a restaurant. You always go to the newest first. And they always compete. They always match the prices or maybe even lower price. And what's it do? It draws business away from other property. And that is what's happened the past eight years, is that as we have continued to lose NIU, it's not that we've approved a bunch of apartments the past eight or 10 years, a few. But what we really need is a moratorium on apartments. I mean, when you take another 1,100 loss, 20% of those are probably off campus. So let's back that number down to 900 students. Take that number in half, because the average rental unit is probably a two-bedroom apartment, maybe a three-bedroom. Take 900 divided in half. It's about 450 units. You won't see an effect this year, because freshmen are required to live on campus. It's not until your sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So really, this problem is kicked down a year down the road before we'll start to see the effects of that shortage of the vacancies. Cliff Notes version, we need to look and plan for what we're doing with rental housing and apartments. And if the developer, there's plenty of opportunity, especially in the Northwest Fifth Corridor, for buying dilapidated housing that needs fixed up. If the more the merrier, the more people that want to get into the rental housing business, the more there is. But we need to refurbish the existing stock we have. The cash flow isn't there. So I'm requesting that we really need to look at not adding any more apartments to DeKalb. I mean, we just can't handle it. We already have 50%. Several years ago, the council was talking about putting a moratorium on apartments. I think that if this plan moves forward, a big item that will come before council, and you'll see the other residents in the community feel similar to what I do. So I appreciate your time. And feel free if any of you would like to discuss with it any further. Uh, I'm always available. Again, Will Heinisch, and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we only have one person in the audience, um, and so we will move on <coughs> to approval of minutes. Um, I will uh, be happy to take a motion for approval. If there's any comments, deletions, corrections. <clears throat> Just one little typo in the third sentence. Chair Atherton called the meeting at order A6, 6 p.m. Got it. Okay. That's Already it. noted. Thank you. Well, that was my big contribution, Derek. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, gold star for you. <laughs> Anyone else? If not, I'll take a motion. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. I move to approve the minutes of uh, June 15, 2016. Moved by Castro. I'll second. Second by Near. Those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Minutes have passed. We have no old business, so we start with new business, item F1. Derek, would you like to speak on that, please? Punt. He's punting to me. I'm going to uh, oh. take that, that item. I, I worked with uh, the applicant on this a little bit, and, and he prepared the report for me as I was working on some other things uh, this past week. Um, I don't see him in the audience, but I do believe in your report you have a copy of the requested plat of resubdivision. Um, if, if you're looking at the plat, the underlying lot numbers, lot 101 and lot 100, are on the southwest corner of Arrowhead Lane and Greenwood North Road, and there were two. There are, there were two houses on each lot. The lot on the corner was purchased by the owner of Lot 101, and that house has uh, subsequently been torn down. It's currently a vacant lot. Uh, he owns both lots, and his intent is to consolidate the two lots together into one, so that he can build an addition for a garage on the property. As that new addition would go over that common underlying lot line, he's required to combine the two lots into the one. So we have Arrowhead Lane resubdivision proposed for your consideration. 
Um, it, it doesn't require a public hearing, so it's, it's here for your review and consideration and recommendation to forward to the City Council uh, who will take action to formally approve the plat of subdivision. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this point. How many, how many car garage is he planning on putting on that lot? We, we saw some conceptual plans. He hasn't finalized those, but I think it's about a three-car garage. I, it's, it's a large breezeway kind of so leading over to uh, the, the garage that he intends to, to construct. I did have some conversations with him about what constitutes an addition that right. is attached to the house and what constitutes a separate accessory structure and there would be some dif differences in zoning that he would need to conform to yeah. and he's aware of that so we'll when he submits for his building permit we'll look at all of those issues in terms of whether it's part of his structure or an accessory and whether it meets the bulk requirements okay. but his intent is to keep the existing curb cut that goes out to Greenwood it was kind of lined up there for the prior um, access to the prior garage. Sure. Okay. I, I, I do appreciate that question because I had the same question, but I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to rephrase what I think I understood. The question that we have right now is, is, is whether we, um, we do the rezoning of these two lots, make it one. Is that correct? We're basically it's not a re rezoning, it's a resubdivision. Oh, resubdivision, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We're literally erasing that line. Exactly. That's, that's all that is in front of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Taking two lots and making one. And again, I appreciate the question. I, I have yeah. the same curiosity, but I assume that I understand it's not our uh, question right now. Right. His intent is to comply with the zoning and the construction of his expansion. Is he going to put like an apartment above the garage or anything? That wouldn't be consistent with zoning. Hmm. So if he wanted to do that, he'd have to come back and ask for permission. Any other questions? If not, I'll take a motion. A motion to recommend approval for the final plat at the Arrowhead Lane uh, resubdivision, including the waivers from Article 15.04.02 of the UDL. No second. Motion by Krull, second by Near. Any discussion? Is this a roll call or can we just do a voice vote? Uh, roll call, please. Okay. Castro? Yes. Cool. Yes. Katz? Yes. Near? Yes. Ruling? Yes. Atherton? Yes. Motion passes. Six to zero. Okay. Item F2, which is the item that we are being asked to continue until the next. No, I'm sorry. It looks like until the October 12th. Well, meeting. Yes, October 12th. Is there any, uh, so I've not done a continuation. Like what what I want to suggest you do is open the public hearing. Okay. Call it, open it, and then we'll seek a motion to continue this until the October 12th meeting at 6 p.m. Okay. So I'm opening the public hearing. But I, I would ask that you read it as well. Yep. On a request by Pete Ochpinti to approve a special use permit to allow for the construction of 22 multifamily dwelling. 22 unit. 22 <laughs> unit. Thank you. Word missing there. Multifamily dwelling above the ground floor with an allowed commercial use in parenthesis movie theater on the ground floor located on light commercial LC zoned property. Um, and we are asking for a motion to continue the public hearing to October 12th. Do you want to open the public forum please? I did. Oh, you did? Yes. Sorry. Yep, no problem. I'll make a motion to continue um, the request by Pete Ochapini, Ochapini sorry, <laughs> uh, for a special use permit to allow for the construction of the dwelling um, to be continued to the October 12th uh, meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Motion made by Kroll. Second. Second by ruling. 
Those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. So we will continue the public hearing to October 12th. Item F3, <clears throat> public hearing on a request by Carlden LLC for an annexation agreement amendment and to amend the PDC plan development commercial zoning of the property by approving the preliminary final development plans for the subject property on an existing two lot subdivision that has one single tenant building and one multi-tenant building located at 2115 Sycamore Road. Comments from the city? Um, I, I just will note because we just continued the previous item to the October meeting, um, we did make a recommendation that we continue this one to your next meeting. Um, the applicant for this petition is still working with Harbor Freight and does not have a really good idea yet. So their intent was to continue it to your second meeting in September, but if they still needed more time, they could continue it again. The risk in that is that that's the only item on that agenda. So if, if, if you wish, you could go ahead and continue it to the 12th meeting as well to consolidate uh, multiple items into the same meeting. That's completely up to your wishes. Okay, so quick question on that before I, I open, officially open the public hearing and then continue. Um, <clears throat> so we do have some items for a potential next meeting. Would those items not come up in September 28th or? Uh, all those that you see on this agenda will be in, before you on the 28th. Okay. So this would be your fourth item if you choose to continue it okay. to this meeting date. Okay, so commissioners, <coughs> Um, it's up to you as to when you would like to continue this once I open the, the meeting um, or the hearing. So our, our option, just to reiterate, is September 28th, or we can also move this to October 12th as well. So I would, um, I'm opening the public hearing on this request with the motion to continue to whichever date you so choose. Madam Chair, can you read the I'm item? sorry. Can you Again? read the item to open it? Sure. Um, opening the public hearing on a request by Coralden LLC for an annexation agreement amendment and to amend the PDC plan development commercial zoning of the property by approving the preliminary slash final development plans for the subject property on an existing two lot subdivision that has one single tenant building and one multi, <coughs> excuse me, tenant building located at 2115 Sycamore Road and asking for a motion to continue this to a date you so choose. Is there discussion before we, on a date before we hear the motion? Or do you have, do any of you have a preference as to the date, September 28th or October 12th? Do we wanna be safe and move it to October 12th in the event that they aren't? Let's or do we wanna- Let's just consolidate it. Yeah. Um, you wanna, I figured we got to be here on the 28th anyway, right? Right. So then we, we'd have to continue it again, possibly. But since we got to be here anyway, yeah. on the other hand, we got three subjects. Do we want to do four and one, or do we want to do three and two? Right. So yeah, I'm thinking, Adam, you sound like three and two. Do doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter to me either. I'm, I'll be here. <laughs> I say let's just go to the 12th and make it three and two guaranteed instead of four and one potentially. I'm good with that. Second. I, make it, was that a, I was, I was just throwing it out there. It wasn't formal language. Is that a motion? I will make a motion to continue the public hearing for a Coral Den LLC annexation agreement to amend the amendment PC, PDC plan development commercial zoning of the property approved by preliminary final plat development plans. Subject to property existing on the two lap subdivision that has been a one single tenant building and multi tenant building located at 2115 Sycamore Road until our October 12th meeting. Motion made by Curl. I'll second. Second by Near. Those okay. in favor say aye. <laughs> aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. That meeting is continued until October 12th as well. <clears throat> um, there are no considerations listed. Do you have any comments for the re or the items for the next meeting on September 28th? Uh, not specific to the items for next meeting, uh, but prior to adjournment, I think we have a couple of announcements we want to share with the commission. Okay. And uh, cover those quickly. I'm sure. capturing the last item. I'm sure. sorry, who seconded? Uh, Nira did. Thank you. I do. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, as I indicated uh, through correspondence, I think each of you received blind carbon copy of a, a memo from uh, the mayor of the city of DeKalb uh, discussing attendance over the last six months or the first six months of the, of the calendar year. So just to recap, from January to June 30th, we had nine meetings for the Planning and Zoning Commission. And the mayor sent out an email and a notice indicating that of those nine meetings, uh, the attendance of each commission member numbers one through seven uh, in no particular order. Uh, commissioner one was six meetings attended. Two and three had eight meetings attended. Four had six meetings attended. Five had nine meetings attended. Six had seven meetings attended. And commissioner seven had four meetings attended. So out of the nine, um, certainly I think his point in poignancy to the letter was deliberate in the sense that we're encouraging anyone uh, to please attend all meetings if at all possible. I know you all have been very direct with me and the meetings you can attend, I'm fully aware of ahead of time, so please continue to do so. Um, but if, for example, one of those meetings everybody missed, we would be lacking in quorum. So. Um, Specifically, I think that was the intent of that ordinance or that letter that the mayor sent, just to keep everybody aware of the importance of this and there's other life obligation that seems to get in the way. Uh, we would ask that you also consider that uh, prior to continuing with the commission. So that's the, uh, the brevity of the matter and the, I guess just to bring you up to, to speed on the purpose and the intent of that. Are there any questions to that item specifically? And Derek, our term year basically is like a fiscal year, July 1st to June 30th. Uh, it currently is, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to also suggest a recommendation that that changes with our fiscal year. So it was very easy to remember when our fiscal year ended June 30th that your terms all ended too. So for those that need reappointments, I'm going to suggest to the city manager's office and or the mayor that we stagger the next appointment to then coincide with the city's new calendar and fiscal year, which will be January 1st or December 31st, because that's just another date that we're gonna have to remember the middle of the year that sure. some likely won't. So um, yeah, you all have very staggered terms and I think they're uh, in, intent to have uh, continuous rolling of uh, commission members. So some of you have been with us quite some time and some of you are, are recently appointed. So. It's always a pleasure to have you all, but um, looking at the first six months, there is certainly a trend with some uh, that needed to be pointed out, and the, and the mayor was quick to do so. Okay? So that was that one. Um, the other one, on Monday night, uh, I also blind carboned you on a memorandum that went to the city council discussing boards and commissions and consolidations and um, uh, disillusion of some. Uh, commissions and committees. So uh, the city was very good over the years of creating commissions and having people attend, uh, but due to, uh, I, I guess, the direction and policies going other ways, there have been some commissions. Myself, for example, has the Design Review Committee, and the Design Review Committee uh, was created in 2007 and played into uh, the moratorium of conversion of single family houses into two family or multifamily. So some of you were certainly around the city at that time. Um, but the purpose of that committee was to ensure any new residential development in the built up neighborhoods. So think of the traditional parts of town uh, of the community or anywhere else where a, uh, a non complimentary construction could occur. Think of the McMansion approach. And so as, as folklore was explained to me prior to my arrival, there was an interested party that was interested in acquiring two lots, tearing both the smaller houses down and building the McMansion in the city of DeKalb. And that would have changed the character and, and truly the, the nature of at least that block face or perhaps start that transition for the entire neighborhood. And that caused concern and policy to be made of which came out of that the design review committee so the purpose of that commission and committee was to review again those building permits for those single family homes to make sure they're complementary 
So of all the homes on the block where uh, ranch style and this particular house was going to be uh, three story tall and you know, you'd have this uh, towering effect, the design review committee would reflect upon that and score that appropriately that if they did other measures and means to bring the score up, uh, it's plausible they could have built something like that, but likely not because the scoring took into consideration things like windows and roof orientation. So long story very short, um, I think in my first three years of employment at the city, we had uh, over half a dozen, maybe nine or 10 applications in the first three years. We haven't met in probably five to six years. Um, which shows both the, the market and the economy that exists out there, but also there's a, a commission that exists that every member's terms have expired and there hasn't been a need to continue an appointment because there's no work to be done. So the purpose of that memo on Monday night's council meeting was to make a recommendation to the mayor to say, if there are commissions that can be absorbed into other bodies or entities, if there are commissions that are being served by others already, the, the duplication isn't necessarily required. So uh, for your purpose, there was absolutely no recommendation to change it. Um, we, we were last affected, I think in 2012, when some of you transitioned from the Zoning Board of Appeals over to the Planning and Zoning Commission when it was created. Um, and that was the last, um, effect that, that you all had placed upon you. So I think out of all of them, that was the only one that I wanted to quickly get to and say, what's the recommendation? And there was none. So uh, at the very least, that was what has occurred uh, to share some things with you. But I just wanted to touch on those two items uh, as we move forward. I think you all have something quickly too. Um, also, I don't know uh, how many of you follow the council meetings. Uh, one of the items that I presented to the council was the discussion on video gaming businesses. We have seen a number in the last couple of years, a number of what we'll call principal use video gaming businesses come in to the community, which is kind of changing the character and they're, they're coming in and locating all very close to each other. When the, when the state passed the initial acts to allow video gaming, the original intent was that existing bars, restaurants, who had liquor licenses were asking for this as a way to supplement their, their business and their incomes. And it, it occurred in that fashion for the next few years. I think very quickly, um, some people figured out that they could just get a, a liquor license and not have a bar or a restaurant and open up a very small 1,200 square foot storefront. Uh, again, kind of keep in mind the economy at the time that was happening uh, five or six years ago. We we're starting to see retail uh, uh, vacancies in our retail strip shopping centers. So many of those places became a good target for people to open these new businesses and, and communities were very eager to have those spaces occupied. Um, what we didn't expect was that they don't operate like a normal business. In fact, in talking with many of these people who operate this type of video gaming, they'd be just as happy to open five individual re um, video gaming businesses in one shopping center. Keep in mind, video gaming is, is restricted to only five machines per, per establishment, and that's a state requirement, something we don't have any control over. So if you need five machines, you don't need a lot of space. If the community will give you a liquor license and doesn't tie any requirement to that, that you serve food or have a kitchen, you can get that type of a business started up pretty quickly. And um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out if you go to the state's gaming website how much money each one of these things produces because all of those figures are readily available on their website. So we started seeing a, a very heavy concentration of these establishments on Sycamore Road. We had seven that, op that opened up within a very short distance of each other or that we had applications for. So we started talking to the city council about this uh, about a month and a half ago to see what direction they wanted to go and get some feedback from them. At their last meeting, the council did approve a moratorium on the establishment of new video gaming establishments to give staff and the, the Planning and Zoning Commission an opportunity to evaluate 
what they've seen and what some of the options might be. And they're very interested in getting your feedback and more importantly, um, having that public hearing and, and hearing comments from our public as to what the desires for our community might be with regard to video gambling. So somewhere in those next couple of agendas, we're gonna probably start with maybe a workshop, maybe not do the public hearing right away, but get some, get you educated, get you the materials, um, let you have some opportunities to review those materials and ask us for what you might think is important additional information so that then we'll publish for the public hearing and, and have an actual uh, case on a proposed text amendment that would support some of these requests. So I just wanted to make you aware that that's coming forward, um, if not at the next meeting, that first meeting in October. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything else? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved by ruling, second by Castro. Those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you. Cool.